This is the Celebrity Afterlife Report Podcast. Hello and welcome to yet another installment of the Celebrity Afterlife Report. As usual, I have a roundup of all the -the up-to-the-moment gossip about your favorite deceased celebrities, as well as some big news. The Celebrity Afterlife Report has just been picked up by iTunes. That is great news, as it will allow us to reach even more people. Please subscribe if you haven't already and tell your friends that they can now hear our reports on iTunes. I am, of course, your host, The Celebrity Medium. Let's dive headlong into some next world gossip, shall we? Even if you aren't a fan of professional wrestling, you're probably familiar with the name of Vince McMahon. He is the chairman of World Wrestling Entertainment, or WWE. Now, what you may not know is that Vince bought the company years ago from his father, also named Vince McMahon, who, like his father Jess before him, was also a wrestling promoter. Vince McMahon Sr. has been a resident of the afterlife for some time now, but we haven't heard anything about him up to this point. Now, as I've reported in previous editions of the report, There is professional wrestling in the next world, but as it turns out, none of it is run by the deceased Mr. McMahon. A few days ago, I found out from one of my afterlife paparazzi sources that Vince Sr. has other, bigger plans. It turns out that he wants to produce theatrical events that don't involve men hitting each other with folding chairs, specifically Shakespearean drama. To that end, he has been having a replica of Mr. Shakespeare's Globe Theater constructed. According to my sources, it's a faithful reproduction of the original, albeit much larger, with a lot more seating. Mr. McMahon's plans call for nightly productions of the Bard's plays, performed as they would have been during Shakespeare's time on the earthly plane. In order to be as true to the original productions as possible, Mr. McMahon has asked Shakespeare himself to be the permanent director of the shows, and my understanding is that William has agreed to do that. Okay, now here's where things get a little odd. As you may know, in Shakespeare's day, all women's parts were played by men. The playwright agreed to direct the show only if McMahon would keep it that way. For reasons known only to him, the former promoter has decided that the best people to use in his shows are former wrestlers who work for him on the earthly plane. As strange as it may sound, one of my sources swears he witnessed a rehearsal of Othello in which the famous Moore was played by Gino Morella, who during his days in the squared circle was known as Gorilla Monsoon. As bizarre as that may seem, my source tells me that Monsoon was actually pretty good in the role. I have a feeling there'll be a lot more to this story. I will, of course, follow it and give you updates as I get them. Just before I recorded this episode of The Report, I got an update on the Marilyn Monroe Andy Warhol situation. As I've been reporting, as unlikely a couple as they seem, the blonde bombshell and the pop artist have been dating for some time and announced a while back that they were now engaged. My information is that they were planning on a spring wedding. Things got thrown into chaos, however, when actress Donna Douglas, Ellie Mae on the Beverly Hillbillies TV show, arrived in the afterlife. Douglas pitched the idea to Marilyn of working together on a movie about Monroe's life in which Douglas would star. Monroe was intrigued with the idea to the point of getting Otto Preminger to agree to direct the picture. Things were going swimmingly until Warhol heard about it. And he said that no one other than Monroe, especially a third-rate TV actress, as he called Douglas, should be playing his fiancée. Andy and Marilyn had a public argument about the situation and haven't been seen together since. Now we know why. 
The Some Like It Hot star told a writer for a Netsk World magazine that the wedding is off. In tears, she said that Warhol insisted she break her promises to Douglas and Preminger and that she was unwilling to go back on her word to them. The final straw was when Andy said that she had to choose between the movie or him. Bottom line, the movie is on, with Douglas set to star in it, and the wedding is off. Good news, Afterlife Bachelors, Marilyn is back on the market. Regular listeners to the report know the ongoing story of Judy Garland and her attempt to construct a women-only community in the next world. Garland, who apparently soured on men after her multiple earth plane marriages all ended in divorce, saw her grand plans grind to a halt when she couldn't find enough females trained in construction to help her achieve her dream. Fred Trump, father of the Donald, came to her rescue by loaning her some of his workers. Many wondered why he was being so generous until he revealed to a reporter that he had long had a crush on the Wizard of Oz star. When we left off last week, Trump Sr. was planning on proposing to Garland. According to my sources, he has now done just that. In a shocking turn of events, Garland has said yes, leaving many afterlife lesbians wondering where that leaves her plans for a male-free community. A source close to the story tells me that he asked Judy that very question. Nothing changes, she said. I'm moving forward with the town. Well, what about Fred Trump, she was asked. He'll be living there with me, she replied. But what about that whole no men thing? I've said all I'm going to say right now, Garland snapped. My spidey sense tells me this will not sit well with some of her porters. Stand by for more. Lastly, former New York Governor Mario Cuomo may be reconsidering his decision to become a rodeo clown in the next world. Upon finding out that there are no public offices to run for and no poverty to help eradicate it in the afterlife, Governor Cuomo decided that he wanted to try living on the wild side. No sooner had his lifestyle change become public knowledge than next world animal lovers began picketing his home and following him everywhere he went. In protests described to me as reminiscent of the infamous Westboro Baptist Church's anti-gay picketing of funerals, Cuomo was called names and harassed in public on a daily basis. It has been reported in the Afterlife Press that Marilyn uh, Mario has told friends, why did I ever say I wanted to be a rodeo clown? I was just looking for some fun. I was really half kidding anyway. It seems like the governor has discovered that being a public figure in the next life can be just as divisive as it was on the earthly plane. That's it for the Celebrity Afterlife Report for this week. I'd like to especially thank our new iTunes listeners for joining us. I hope all of you will please come back next week when I'll have more up-to-the-minute gossip about all your favorite deceased celebrities. I'm the Celebrity Medium. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to the Celebrity Afterlife Report podcast. To ask a question about your favorite deceased celebrity, call 818-3-MY-DREAM. 818-3-MY-DREAM. 818-369-3732.